بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد our previous class we were reading in the chapter باب ما جاء في الذبح لغير الله باب ما جاء في الذبح لغير الله the chapter the author he has mentioned about the, that which has come meaning from the evidences in the book and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with regards to the ruling of slaughtering for other than Allah Azza wa Jal and that this is major shirk when we have read the evidences that the author has mentioned and seen some benefits related to those evidences and what is left to read from this chapter is the Masail but we can just briefly read the, the text again for a reminder, the author he says, "Babu ma jaa fi dhabh li ghairi Allah," the chapter that which has come with regards to slaughtering for other than the sake of Allah. Wa qawli Allahi Taala kul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyya wa mamati lillahi Rabbi alamin la shadika lah. Al ayah. He mentioned the statement of Allah Azza wa Jalla, "Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that verily my salat and my slaughtering, salati wa nusuki, a dhabihati." That verily my salat, my salat and my slaughtering and my life and my death is for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. There is no partners with Him in this whatsoever. And also the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, whenever He has commanded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to establish the salat sincerely for the sake of your Lord and slaughter, <coughs> meaning likewise for Him alone, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Then the author, he mentioned, Rahimahullah and Aliyan. رضي الله عنه قال حدثني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بأربع كلمات بأربع كلمات that verily the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم has narrated to me four four statements علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله عنه he mentioned and he says لا أن الله من ذبح لغير الله may Allah curse the one who slaughtered for other than Allah this is this is the shahid in the point from the narration لَعَنَ اللَّهُ مَنْ لَعَنَ وَالِدَيْهِ And may Allah curse the one who cursed his parents. لَعَنَ اللَّهُ مَنْ آوَى مُحْدِثًا And may Allah curse the one who protect the muhdith. لَعَنَ اللَّهُ مَنْ غَيِّرَ مَنَارَ الْأَرْضِ And likewise, may Allah curse the one who changed the signposts of the earth and uh, the markers, the landmarks <coughs> on the, uh, of the land. رواه مسلم then the author, he mentioned the hadith of Tariq ibn Shihab رضي الله عنه وعن Tariq ibn Shihab رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال دخل الجنة رجل في ذباب There was a man that, that entered the paradise because of a, a fly ودخل النار رجل في ذباب And likewise a man, he entered the hell fire because of a fly قالوا وكيف ذاك, وكيف ذاك يا رسول الله وكيف ذلك يا رسول الله So the companions they said oh, and how was this O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال مر رجلان على قوم لهم صنم لا يجوزه أحد حتى يقرب له شيئا فقالوا لأحدهما قرب So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned that there were two men there were two men and they passed by a, a people and they're on a path and they pass they're on, their, they're on a road or on their way and they pass by uh, a group of people and they have a an idol and they have an idol that they worship besides Allah Azza wa Jalla, and nobody passes by this idol except that he has to slaughter something seeking nearness uh, to that idol, something, whatever it may be. So they said to those two men, slaughter something, qarrib something, slaughter something, and he's seeking nearness and worship uh, to our stone and our idol. Qala laysa, so one of them he said, laysa indi shay'un qarrib. One of them he said, I don't have anything to, to slaughter. I don't have anything to slaughter. Naam. قَالُوا لَهُ So they said to him, قَرِّبْ وَلَوْ ذُبَابًا Just slaughter something even if it's a fly. فَخَرَّبَ ذُبَابٍ فَخَلُّ سَبِيلَهُ فَدَخَلَ النَّارِ So the Prophet ﷺ said he slaughtered a fly and then they, uh, they, uh, they let him go. And then he, because of this he died and entered the hellfire. He died upon disbelief and entered the hellfire. وَقَالُوا لِلْآخِرْ خَرِّبْ And they said to the other one, slaughter something and seek nearness to our stone and to our idol. فَقَالَ مَا كُنْتُ يُقَرِّبُ لِأَحَدٍ شَيْئًا دُونَ اللَّهِ So he said, I would never slaughter anything 
for anyone seeking nearness to any anything other than Allah Azza wa Jal. فَضَارَبُ فَدَخَلَ جَنَّةً So they, they killed him and they struck him with the safe on his neck and then he died so he entered paradise. رَوَاهُ أَحْمَدُ رَوَاهُ أَحْمَدُ These are the texts that we have read in the previous class. So now we just read the Masail, the author he has mentioned. فِيهِ مَسَائِلْ And these evidences here from the book in the Sunnah that clarify that slaughtering is an act of worship and that it is similar just like Salat that whoever prayed for other than the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, then no doubt, and if he prayed to a stone, or if he prayed to an idol, or if he bowed or prostrated uh, for the sake of other than Allah Azza wa Jal, then no doubt about that, he would have committed major shirk. The same ruling just like this, the one who has slaughtered in the name or for the sake of other than Allah Azza wa Jal, because these verses are clear, that inna salati wa nusuki, Naam, and then wa mahiyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. And then he said, Subhana la sharika lahu. La sharika lahu. No partners does he have whatsoever. No partners does he have whatsoever. And he not in the salat and not in the, the nusuk. La sharika lahu. Naam wa bidhalika umiltu wa na awwal muslimin. This is how the author he began his misal. He says, Al ula, the first issue, tafsiru inna salati wa nusuki. The, the explanation of this verse, and this has proceeded. And we've seen that Allah has coupled these two acts of worship together. And then after mentioning these two acts of worship specifically for their virtue and their, and their uh, status and rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that the salat is the greatest uh, ibadah that is done with the body parts, and the actions, the actions, the greatest actions of Islam after the shahadatayn, of course, is the salat. And likewise, one of the greatest acts of worship that one would perform with his wealth is the slaughtering and the nusuk, that he would give up the wealth that he loves and he, was, he would purchase that animal and he would slaughter it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, drawing near to him alone. In any case, they're coupled together in this verse, mentioned together to clarify their greatness. And also in this verse, وَلَا شَرِيكَ لَا لَا شَرِيكَ لَا No partners whatsoever. Meaning that whoever associated a partner in one of these acts of worship, or rather in any act of worship, then this would be considered major shirk. This would be considered major shirk. So we have a general principle that a believer should learn and know, and that is to direct anything that we have been commanded with, to direct that to Allah alone, some commandment that we have been commanded with, al ma'murat, to direct that and devote oneself in performing that action to, the, to Allah alone, for the sake of Allah alone, this is considered at tawheed and this is considered at ikhlas and this is considered at iman But to direct something from those acts of worship or what we have been commanded with to other than Allah Azza wa Jal, then this is considered shirk. This is considered shirk. Sarfu al ibadati lillahi wahdahu la sharika la hadha huwa al ibadah wa hadha huwa at tawheed wal iman wal ikhlas. With taqwa, naam to direct and to devote one's intention and oneself entirely to Allah to perform an action of worship and to perform the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jalla. This is tawheed and this is ibadah and this is iman and this is taqwa. This is ikhlas and piety and righteousness. <coughs> As for if someone were to direct something from that act of worship, and he, the intention to, to perform one of these acts of worship that is established in the deen of Allah, that it is worship, that it is ibadah, we are commanded to, to perform it. To direct one's intention to other than Allah with regards to this, then this is shirk. This is major shirk. And this is the case here. So just as salat is established ibadah, also slaughtering a dhabiha or nusuk is all or dhabih. This is also an established ibadah. So to do that for other than the sake of Allah is major shirk. Is major shirk. Naam? Likewise, the, the second verse he says, وَالثَّانِيَ تَفْسِيرُ وَفَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرُ فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرُ And then pray for the sake of your Lord with ikhlas, and he established the salat وَنْحَرُ and slaughter, and slaughter the animal. So likewise, here again we have another verse, and Allah Azza wa Jal is commanding His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to establish the salat, just like in the previous verse, and likewise to slaughter. For in this, this, this verse is a command for salli li rabbika wanhar. The other verse, inna salati wa nusuki. Lillahi rabbil alameen. And after the end of the verse, la sharika lahu. And he, so this is clear that these are acts of worship that are pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah has commanded them. 
Allah has commanded them, so they must be for the sake of Allah alone. And they're coupled here again also to show the status and the rank. In our previous class, we have seen that al-dhabh, al-dhabh, yakunu shirkan, yakunu shirkan, yani min jihatayn, al-dhabh, qad yakunu, and if it can a shirkan, yakunu shirkan, min jihatayn. That shirk, it can be, I mean, excuse me, to slaughter for other than the sake of Allah. Al-dhabhu li ghayri Allah, yukunu shirkan min jihatayni. Ma huma. To slaughter for other than the sake of Allah would be considered shirk from two aspects. Sah. First one is to talk. And he slaughters for other than the sake of Allah. Slaughtering, seeking nearness for other than the sake of Allah. For example, he goes to the grave. He wants to draw near to the grave. He wants something from the grave. He has his hope and his heart attached to the grave. He slaughters for the grave. Or the jinn. He's afraid of the jinn. He, and he wants to be protected from the jinn. And, and so he slaughters seeking nearness to the jinn. Seeking the, the, and he, for, for out of fear of them and, ho and hoping to be safe from them and protection from them. So he slaughters for them, drawing near to them. This is, from, this is one aspect. Uh, tasmiyah. Uh, tasmiyah. The second and the second aspect is a tasmiyah. A tasmiyah to mention other than the name of Allah Azza wa Jal before slaughtering. How is that? How is that uh, considered shirk? The first one is considered shirk from the taqarrub, I mean the actual act of ibadah, drawing near and seeking nearness, hoping for uh, a benefit from the one he's slaughtering for, or protection, or uh, hoping for their benefit and protection, or fearing their harm. But how is the tasmiyah <coughs> considered ibadah? Yani meaning that if it's done for the sake of Allah, it's ibadah. But if it's done for other than the sake of Allah, then this is shirk. How is that? <laughs> That's one aspect. Ta'adhiban. Huh? But the statement. The statement. To say bismillah is a statement. It's an worship. So to say something other than that. In, in this action, it's, it's true. The answers aren't wrong, but they're not precise. Uh, Abdullah. Alistiyana bi ghayrillah. Alistiyana bi ghayrillah. Yani whenever you say Bismillah, <coughs> the ba here is for istiyana, to seek help, to seek help. To seek aid. So we see that the word Bismillah, when we say Bismillah, we really this is a, a means of seeking the help from Allah. Allah. Seeking His blessing by beginning with His name first, mm -hmm. but also seeking His help and His aid. Seeking His help and His aid. You know, some of the supplications and the adhkar, the, the, the purpose from them is to seek Allah's help. Allahul Musta'an. You say Allahul Musta'an and you, oh Allah help me. And that's the meaning. Allah is the one whose aid is sought. Meaning Allah, Allahul Musta'an. Now I'm like this also from the Bismillah. Bismillah, <clears throat> you hope for Allah's help. Whenever we say Bismillah, we're mentioning His name and He's hoping that He will aid us and support us and facilitate for us our deed and our action or our statement. So, I mean, the, the ulama, they derive this from the, the linguistic benefit that Ba is Aristian, Ba Aristiana. Naam, so Bismillah, and I stay bi be Dikilillah and Zawajal. I seek aid in my action by mentioning the name of Allah Azawajal, invoking Him, hoping that He will help me. Naam, so whenever they slaughter in the other than the name of Allah Azza wa Jal, then this is uh, shirk from the aspect, specific aspect of Aristiana. Naam, and this is one of the greatest acts of worship. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Allah combined the, those together in the Fatiha. And there is no way to worship Allah except with his aid and support. Except with his aid and support. So we see that the person, if he slaughtered for other the sake of Allah, in other than the name of Allah, then he had made shirk with Allah in two aspects. The first one is any, the greatest affair, which is to draw near to other than Allah, to seek, uh, to seek the reward or the help or the aid, and to seek to have his heart attached to other than Allah. And the second aspect is by mentioning other than the name of Allah. And this is shirk and isti'ana, specific type of ibadah. And we've seen that there was four uh, cases like that likewise. So what if he, he slaughtered for the sake of Allah and other than the name of Allah? Now it's still shirk. It's still shirk. He said he's only slaughtering for the sake of Allah, uh, but in the name of the wali. Uh, in the name of the wali. He's making the wali the wasita. And he only for the sake of Allah, but the wali. 
in the name of the wali. Or if he slaughtered in the name of Allah, but for the wali. Uh, still a shirk. No. Not until he slaughters uh, in the name of Allah for the sake of Allah. No. What if he slaughters in the name of Allah just to have some meat or to feed a guest? This is permissible. This is permissible. Uh, no. But it's not ibadah. It's not ibadah like the biha or aqiqa. Excuse me, udhiya. This is a, an, a specific act of worship. As for the isti'ana, and the like, this is definitely a bad day, but it's not slaughtering, seeking nearness to the sake of Allah. This is slaughtering to have uh, halal food and halal meat, and this is permissible. If a person, he had a good intention when he did that, he can turn it to a bad day, slaughtering that which is permissible, slaughtering in the way of the sunnah, having this food that is good for me and my family, that I can feed them upon that which is correct and halal, having this intention. Now it could turn it into a bad day, but the origin is this is something that's permissible in mubah. Permissible and mubah. Now, so this was the benefits we seen from inna salati wa nusuki wa fasalli li rabbika wa nhar. That, uh, that uh, this is ibadah, nusuk and slaughtering. And the nusuk here is, was, uh, as Mujahid mentioned, this is with regards to the slaughtering in the days of Hajj, yani, which is the actual act of worship. It's an actual right from the rites of Hajj, and this is an act of worship. It must be for the sake of Allah alone. Likewise, whenever this verse was, was revealed here about al kawthar fasalli li rabbika wan har, many of the ulama, they mentioned that this is with refer, reference to the ulhiya as well. To the ulhiya as well on the day of Eid. Fasalli, and salat al Eid, wan har, al ulhiya. That you pray the salat of Eid, and then also after that you slaughter the animal. Now, so these are with regards to the, the legislative slaughtering of the animals that is a means of seeking nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal by complying to His commandments. The author, he says, Also in the, in the hadith of Ali radiallahu anhu, we've seen that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that four type of people are cursed. And he began with uh, cursing the one who slaughtered for other than the sake of Allah. And he indicated the greatness. And he beginning with the one that was most severe. So this indicates likewise uh, a clear issue that uh, this is something that is haram. Rather it is major shirk. Uh, the Prophet wasallam said, May Allah curse the one who slaughters for other than Allah. What does it mean, may Allah curse so and so, and so or such and such? I mean the curse of Allah beyond death. Uh -huh. What does the curse of Allah mean? To be, to be cast far away from the mercy of Allah. And that Allah, our Rahman, will not have mercy on him. That's what it means. To, to, may, may Allah curse him. Meaning may Allah not show, ever, show him mercy ever. Huh? May Allah not show, show him mercy ever. If there's no mercy from Allah upon this person, what, what does he have? That he, he would never have good. Naam, so this is, uh, this is very severe. This is very, this is very severe. Very severe. The Prophet sallallahu may Allah curse the one who slaughters for other than Allah. Naam. Also from the benefits of these texts, the author, he mentioned cursing the one who cursed his, his parents. And from the aspect of this, and he cursing uh, your parents, cursing one's own parents, is that one would curse the parents of another person and he will curse his parents. And this is also from the understanding. Nah, cursing one's parents like directly, say, cursing them out. The word cursing here has two meanings. Whenever it was related to, re, re, related to Allah, may Allah curse him. This is, we have seen the previous meaning. And it, may Allah not have mercy on him. May, may he be cast far away from the mercy of Allah. Another aspect of cursing, and Latin also is a seb, to curse him out. And to call him bad names, to call him names and talk bad about him. Nah, and his face and his face to call him names and talk bad about him. So the one who talks bad and calls somebody's parents' name and they in turn call his parents' name, this is as if he has uh, cursed his own family. This is as if, as if it's considered as if he has cursed his own parents. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu has referred to. Uh, similar like this uh, has come in the, in the, in the Quran. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, He has mentioned, that Allah has said, do not curse the, the idols, those whom they call on besides Allah, because then they will curse Allah without knowledge or in transgression and without knowledge. So Allah Azza wa Jal has forbidden cursing the idols that, uh, and, and that are worshipped besides Allah, the idols and the gods of the mushrikeen. And if you talk bad about them, this is something beneficial and good. To belittle them and to lower them, this is no doubt, this is good. 
and it, we don't honor the idols and these false gods and show respect for them but because uh, the the possibility that if one were to speak bad and to and to uh, speak ill of those uh, false gods that those who worship them and are attached to them may in turn curse Allah which is great which is very great then it's not permissible so again we see here the issue of uh, taking uh, in consideration the 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 goods and the good and the heart and the evil or the benefit and the virtue of an action and also the uh, the the mafsad and musalih and mafasid the the advantage and it's something good to perform it and to bring about would be to talk about about their idols and, and to show them how how low that they are and show them how much we detest them and, and and the likes like that but if this could bring about a, a, an evil which is greater than that then we will refrain from that and to have somebody speak ill of Allah is something that is a great evil so we would not want to bring that about we want we wouldn't want to bring that about this is something very uh, important and beneficial for a believer to understand this principle and likewise in that hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he considered the one who cursed uh, somebody else's parents and then in turn they cursed his parents considering him as if he cursed his own parents so he has the and he he has the sin of that and it's considered he did not do it himself but he was the cause for it he did not do it himself, but he was the cause for it. And the Prophet ﷺ considered him as if he had, had performed the action himself. So then we should be cautious about the actions that we do. Because sometimes people may do or say something and it will be a cause to bring about much evil. It will be a cause to bring about much fitna or calamity or, 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 or trials and the likes. And then a person, he will be held accountable for that. And the one who is the means to bring about something. And he, likewise, he shares in that, whether it's good or whether it's bad. So if a person, he is the means for his parents to be cursed by cursing somebody else's parents, then he, it's as if, as if he cursed his own parents. If somebody was a means for the religion of Islam to be, to be spoken ill of or, or to be talked bad about because of his actions, then likewise, and he, then he's going to be held accountable for this. We see that many of the Muslims today them, that have been misguided, they, they want to defend Islam and they wind up only belittling and, 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 uh, uh, the Muslims and bringing trouble for them. How many times have Muslims tried to defend Islam and they go do some crazy action of terrorism in the lands and then next thing you know the whole Muslim society has, uh, ha has major problems and, and, and hardship and difficulty because of that. Because the Muslim, some Muslims go and do something in a store or in a land or in some, some place and then because of that the, the, all of the Muslims have a hardship and difficulty in that area. This is a problem. So a believer, he thinks about what his actions will bring about. <clears throat> and he's afraid that he will be something, be, be from those people who his actions or his statements will cause a fitna. Nam, and because he will be held accountable for this. Likewise, the author, he says, Al-Khamisa, La'anu, man awa muhdithan. The curse for the one who has uh, protected uh, and given refuge to a muhdith. Yani somebody who has introduced an innovation in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Or somebody who has committed a... Uh, uh, a major sin that he is required to be held accountable for and he is hiding him uh, and uh, giving him refuge from the authorities or he is protecting an innovator so on and so forth or giving an innovator refuge the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam cursed this person the author he says in muhdith wa huwa ar-rajulu yuhdithu shay'an yajibu fi haqqi llahi nam falyattajihu ila man yujiruhu min dhalika the muhdith is a man or someone who uh, introduces something or performs an action uh, uh, that is obligatory to be held accountable. He's, it's obligatory for him to be held accountable with regards to this in the right of Allah. Like, for example, somebody who committed a crime that there is a legal punishment for, and then uh, he runs and hides, and then he seeks uh, uh, protection from somebody, and they protect him, and they hide him, and they help him get away from the authorities. This is the, an example of this person that, uh, that the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has cursed, the one who helps him do this, the one who helps him do this. Somebody committed a crime like, like stealing, and, and the authorities are looking for him, and then he protects him and, and hides him. Or somebody committed a crime like zina, and then has been established upon him, and then he flees, and the likes like this. And the Muslim ruler is going to establish the, the head on this person, and somebody hides him and helps him uh, 
gives him refuge to, to go away like this. Likewise, somebody who is a known innovator and he's establishing innovation and somebody protects him and aids him and supports him and gives him refuge. All of this is considered here uh, under the curse of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for that person. For that person. If that's the case for the person helping him, what about the person who did it? Naam. As-Sadisa, la'anu man ghayra manar al-ard. Manar al-ard. Wa hiya al-marasim. Alati tufarriku bayna haqqika min al-ardi wa haqqi jalika. Fatuhayyiruha bitaqdimi bitaqdimin aw taqheer. He said also the sixth benefit or mas'ala is that in that hadith of Ali radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he cursed the one who changed the signpost of the land. And the author, he is mentioning here that the signpost there, the, the, the signs or the, 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 the marking points that distinguish between your right on the, on the land and your neighbor's right. And your neighbor's right. And he, like for example, there's a fence here or there's something that is known between the separates between you and your neighbor's land. To change that and to take a part of his land, this is what is considered here. To change that by giving more or ta or less, by t taking more or less like this, uh, this is considered um, changing manar al ard, the signpost of the earth. Also, some of the ulama they mention another meaning, and here the author he's referring to one one meaning of this. That means, for example, there's a fence here, then somebody will go and move it a little bit more this way and take some of his his neighbor's property take some of his neighbor's property, moving his posts like this, or moving his fence like this, or moving something that is a line or a marker that is known between him and his neighbor's property to move his over some to get some of his property. Even if it's a hand span, there's a threat for that. Here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is cursing the one who does this. Who is cursing the one who does this, who changes those markers. Another meaning the ulama they mention is that the one who changes the actual signpost, for example, this one says north, he changes it south. Or it says, you know, go this way to this land. He turns it this way, like this, changing the 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 signs on the road on, or on the path, and to mislead people. This is also considered under the curse the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned. As sabi'ah, al farq bayna la'ani al mu'ayyin wa la'ani ahl al ma'asiyati ala sabil al umum. The author he mentioned the, the seventh uh, masala, and this is very important. And the different, he mentioned the difference between cursing a particular individual and between cursing the people of disobedience in general. There's a difference here. The Prophet wasallam he mentioned these people in general. And he didn't mention a person specifically. So there's a difference between cursing the people who do bad. For example, say that somebody, may Allah curse the liars. Or may Allah curse the people who, take it, uh, the, who, who, who use the deen for their personal gain. May Allah curse the fitna makers, so on and so forth. Like this, this is, may Allah curse the, 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 the alcohol drinkers, like this, or the drunks, like this, or the people who do this or, or that, any in general, without mentioning somebody's name. Naam? Like this, in general, without mentioning somebody's name, or somebody, for example, this one who, one, he, who cursed his, his dad. Said, so may Allah curse the one who curses his parents. If we see somebody cursing his parents, can we, may Allah curse you. You can't do that. Now you can't, you can't do that him to specifically. The one who's doing that action specifically, you can't say, may Allah curse you, or may Allah curse so-and-so, the son of so-and-so, and mention him by his name. This is not permissible. This is not permissible. There's a difference between cursing in general the people who do a specific evil deed and, and cursing an individual by his name specifically. This is the point here. Now, and this is something yani, that's permissible uh, on the, in general to curse the, the people of evil or the wickedness to say, May Allah, la'anat Allah ala zalimeen. For example, may Allah's curse be upon the oppressors. This is permissible. If we see one person doing dhulm, we can't say, May Allah curse him, that person. Curse, may Allah curse you, that person. It's not permissible. There was uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also in another narration from the people that the Prophet cursed, Yani uh, Shari al Khamar. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he cursed the people who drink alcohol. There's a curse from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for those who drink alcohol. Uh, and likewise, uh, there's a man who came and he was brought to the Prophet more than one time, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for drinking alcohol. So the people said, they said to him, Allah. Yani, how many times has he been brought? He's been brought three, four times. And if we're drinking alcohol, how many times has, may Allah curse him? The Prophet Sallallahu heard that. He said, they said, he said, don't curse him. Don't curse him. 
because I, I know about him that he loves Allah and his messenger. So there's a difference between cursing uh, in general, the people of sin and the act, and the people of evil and so on and so forth, and, and, and cursing a specific person, a specific person. This is what the author is mentioning here. Also from the same idea, likewise, is to, for example, the people of disbelief, like the Jews and the Christians. In general, we say that they're in the fire. The belief of a Muslim, the Jews and the Christians, that they're, they're in the hellfire. They're not in paradise. Not one of them. Not one of them. Naam? Not one of them. This is a belief of a Muslim. Naam? But we don't mention that about so-and-so, so-and-so, and so So-and-so by it. Because we don't know. Maybe, he'll, maybe Allah will guide him. Somebody that's alive today. We wouldn't say that, that, that all, all the Christians are in the hellfire. Naam? In general, the ones who die upon, and the meaning of that, the ones who die upon Christianity. There's no doubt about that. All the Jews are in the hellfire. And all, meaning all of the Jews that die upon Judaism. They're, they're, all of the Buddhists are in the hellfire. Lashek. Those who, all of them who die. I mean, they die in that state. That's, what that's their destination and their abode. But to mention, for example, some Jew came in right now. We could have said, oh, he's from the people of hellfire. You can't say that about him. Because maybe Allah will guide him. We don't know who is Allah. We don't know. Maybe before he dies, Allah will guide him. So to, to, to mention that an individual from the people of the book or from the disbelievers that he by that individual right there is in the hellfire, that's not permissible. And that's speaking about Allah without, without knowledge. Without knowledge. So a believer, he watches his tongue and also his creed and belief. We, we wouldn't step over the boundaries. That's the right of Allah Azza wa Whoever he guides, he guides whom he wills. Now many people, they have been the staunch, staunch enemies of the Muslims and then they became the best and the strongest supporters of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now... So this is the case. We don't, we don't uh, you need to curse them all in general or to mention that they're in the hellfire in general. Nah, but this, and this is the creed of a believer. But to mention one of them specifically who's still alive that he's in the hellfire or she's in the hellfire, this is not permissible because we don't know how that person will die. Maybe he will be guided before, before he dies. And Allah, and Allah knows best. Nah. So the author he mentioned, uh, the, the eighth one, Athamina. And he mentioned the benefit here or the Mas'ala just to ponder or to remember that this great, great story is the story of the fly. And that, that we, wouldn't, we shouldn't take this Tawheed lightly. And it's in the heart. And that whenever a person is heart is attached to something, no matter what it is, how small or big it is, then, then this is a major calamity for him. That his heart should only be attached to Allah in, in all of his affairs. And he shouldn't take it lightly. Oh, it's just a fly just one time what well, just one time two times like this something that's small i'm just going to hang out with them uh the christians whenever they go to christmas i'm just going to hang out with them and they're going to get put their hands together and they're going to sit at the table and make dua uh and then the, the, the muslim going to go and be like you know it's all good it's all good and they're going to make dua at the table and the, the, the dad is going to bow their head and then they're going to say in the name of jesus uh oh, father we thank you for this meal and, and then they go through the, maybe some brothers don't know about it, that's what they do. So if they invite a, mu a Muslim to the dinner, they, you don't go to that dinner. You don't go to that dinner. They're about to go there and they're going to bless their food in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what they say. That's what they say. And so in any case, we don't take it lightly. There's somebody into the hellfire because of a, a, of a fly. Of a fly, meaning it's, it, the issue here is, is about Tawheed and Shirk. Now, Matasia, Kono who dechal and now be said to be that he could do bab, added the lem yak, sid who bell, faala who to halusan, min sharrihim. So the author he says here the, the issue now is that this man he entered the hellfire because of that fly, and he did not even intend it. He didn't even intend it, rather, he did this try to get away from their evil. And he, uh, the ulama they mentioned about this statement here of the author uh, that. Yeah, and he meaning that he didn't intend it in the beginning. And he's not going down the path looking for an idol to slaughter for. He's not somebody who slaughters for other than Allah. This person here is not somebody who makes shirk. So he's not going uh, down this road intending to look for an idol to worship other than Allah Azza wa Jal. But whenever the situation came and, uh, and it arose, he didn't pro pro prohibit himself. Rather, he did it. And he, at the time of actually performing that, then he, he slaughtered for other than Allah. He slaughtered that fly for other than Allah. This is why it's mentioned here that he entered the hellfire. And he, so in the beginning, he didn't go on the path seeking any, a fly or, or anything to slaughter or to worship other than Allah. But in the end, he did that. In the end, he did that. And then so his result is that he's in the, he's in the hellfire. At Ashira, 
معرفة قدر الشرك في قلوب المؤمنين كيف صبر ذلك على القتل ولم يوافقهم على طلب طلبتهم مع كونهم لم يطلبوا إلا العمل الظاهر <coughs> So he says here the tenth مسألة is that to know the, the degree or the reality or the greatness of shirk in the heart of the believers that this is something that is major and it's not something that is light how this person he was able to be patient even upon death and he did not agree with them in what they had asked him to perform and uh, they only asked him to perform something that is outward and he, he could have easily in his heart said you know I'm only doing this for the sake of Allah I'm not slaughtering but I'm not slaughtering for this this fly for for the for the for the sake of their idol but he would do it outwardly and inwardly he would not do it they didn't they're not able to control his heart and his attention but because this is something that is major and great in the heart of the believers he was able to be patient upon that and he was able to be patient upon that الحاديه عشرة <coughs> he says ان الذي دخل النار مسلم he said the one who entered the hell fire he's a muslim the one who entered who entered the hell fire what did he enter the hell fire for Slaughtering a fly. Right. Nam. He was a Muslim. Because if he was not a, a, a Muslim, if he was a disbeliever, he wouldn't mention that oh he he went to the hellfire because of a of a fly. He went to the hellfire because of a fly. If he wasn't meaning that he was a Muslim and this action took him out of Islam. Because if he was not a Muslim, then he would have been uh, other uh, the actions of disbelief would have been greater than that. There, there's no need to mention the fly. He's already a disbeliever. He's already a disbeliever. So this is an indication that this person, he was from the people of Al-Islam. Naam, he was a Muslim. Naam, and then he left Islam with this action. Al-Thaniyata Ashra. Fihi sha'idun lil hadith al-sahih. Al-Jannat hu aqrabu ila ahadikum min shiraki na'lihi wa naru mithlu dhalika. Likewise, this is an evidence uh, uh, and a reminder for the believers of that authentic narration that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that paradise is closer to one of you than the than his uh, his lace on his shoe and likewise the fire is the same way and he meaning that this person uh, there was nothing except for him to die and he once he committed shirk all he had to do after that is die the person who was upon shirk or disbelief then there's nothing between him and, and, and that punishment awaiting him in the hellfire is for his soul to leave his body. Uh, is for his soul to leave his body. And we know how weak the body is. Yeah? That all the all, all, only thing that has to happen is his soul to leave that body. And then he will be there experiencing that pain and punishment and torment. Yeah? In the grave, in the barzakh. Likewise, the person of paradise and the one who is righteous. Likewise, that there is nothing between him and his pleasure and delight. Uh, in the in the paradise, except for that he will he will die. That's the only thing that's between the two. So at the time of death, it's one or the other. So a beloved a believer, he remembers that and he prepares for that day. May Allah give us a good ending. Atharitha ashra, marifatu anna amar al qalbi huwa maksud al aqam hatta inda abadat al awthan. He mentioned here that the the thirteenth and final masala is to know the. The actions of the heart, this is what is intended. The actions of the heart, this is what is intended. Even with the people, uh, or this is the main intent, and the greatest intent, the actions of the heart, not the outward appearance, but the main intent is the action of the heart. And even with the people who worship idols, even with the people who worship idols, and they want you to agree with them and to follow their way, and to follow their way. And meaning that one would, uh, would, would, would love their way and like their way. Nam, amr al qalb, the actions of the heart. What are the actions of the heart? Khasha, iman. Al iman. Al iman. Asl iman, ada itiqad al qalb, the the creed of the heart, the belief of the heart, the actions of the heart. They're the Hope and love and fear yeah. and uh, and trust and reliance. What do you say? Ikhlas, sincerity. All of this is from the actions of the heart. Now, that was Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.